Bali is booming. The northernmost suburb of Perth has quickly returned to near pre-pandemic levels of tourist visitation. What are you doing driving the bike? I'm blind. And local authorities are having some issues. About 400,000 West Aussies are expected to go there this year. That's a lot of bintang. Yeah, and the booze fueled behaviour of Aussies abroad is making Bali a veritable death trap. And I'm not talking about people who slept with this dude. Give me an hour, give me two hours. I'm going to take the girl home, say my dog's uh, sick get back to the party and uh, get my double-double on. Now, you might remember Todd, the self-confessed sex addict from that Channel 7 reality show from 2014, What Really Happens in Bali? Well, Todd admitted he used his pet dog, Tito, to convince 100 women to sleep with him in four months, all without a condom. The big twist on the show was when Todd returned a negative test for STIs, which he described as, and I quote, the best day of my life. Thankfully, Todd apparently saw the error of his ways and is a dad these days, still living in Indonesia. And in case you were wondering, poor Tito, his dog slash pimp, died in 2017. OK, as weird as that all was, let's just move it along. Yeah, well, the huge influx of foreign party people to Bali right now is causing a raft of problems. Bali has deported nearly 200 foreigners in the first seven months of this year, which is more than they did the whole of last year. The Department of Foreign Affairs says the number of Aussies who need consular help is back at pre-pandemic levels too. I need help! That's help for legal troubles or serious illness or accidents, all of which are becoming so common that the only thing making more money than the Potato Head Beach Club is the GoFundMe pages of Aussies struggling to pay for legal and medical bills. Indonesian authorities have had a gutful and introduced a number of policies to crack down on boof heads. While the bonk ban would have seen Todd circa 2014 locked up in Karabokan, probably for life, it's a wake-up call for the rest of us, and especially for parents who have kids thinking of doing levers in Bali this year. Speaking of wake-up calls... Yeah, so just when you thought Todd the Bali sex addict was the biggest douche on tonight's episode, multi-millionaire Tim Gurner said, hold my beer. The real estate mogul used a business forum put on by the Australian Financial Review on Wednesday to have a crack at what he called arrogant workers. Take a listen. We need to see unemployment rise. Unemployment has to jump 40-50% in my view. We need to see pain in the economy. We need to remind people that they work for the employer, not the other way around. The cheek of those employees wanting to be treated with respect. How dare they? Gurner started his business empire with loans from his boss and granddad, like any self-made tycoon worth their salt. So you probably shouldn't be surprised that he has a track record of being an entitled dickhead. He's the Avalon Toast guy. Indeed. Gurner went viral around the world in 2017 after telling 60 Minutes that millennials could afford to buy a house if only they could just cut back on smashed Avo on toast. Mm. Well, he's done it again. The tweet, or X, or whatever the f*** you call it these days, featuring Gurner's latest comments has been viewed more than 23 million times. Politicians from all sides of the spectrum have slammed him because, let's face it, Polly's love an easy target who's more hated than them. Even US Congresswoman Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez sunk the slipper in, using Gurner as a convenient patsy for her all CEOs are evil, rich assholes agenda. Ultimately, Gurner is far from being the lone ranger when it comes to rich employers who think workers should accept any treatment and be bloody grateful just to have a job. His big stuff up, though, was expressing it so openly, instead of keeping it on the seventh tee of private golf courses and the lounge bars of exclusive members-only clubs. Rookie mistake, Timbo. Look, here's the thing about being rich, OK? It's great. You might have realised the error of his ways. He's since apologised. There's a bloke in Spain who should probably do the same. I know, right? Spain is already reeling from its own Me Too movement involving former football president Luis Rubiales. And now Spanish reporter Isa Balado was groped on live TV during a news cross in Madrid this week. As you can see, she bravely continues with her job of reporting on a robbery until the news anchor interrupts to ask about the unwanted touching. Balado then confronts the bloke who is standing right next to her like a freaking creep and he denies he did anything wrong. We'll see if a Madrid court agrees because local cops arrested him for the alleged sexual assault hours later. Now, if there's any takeaway from tonight's episode, it's aimed squarely at us fellas. Be better. We've got to kill that attitude. Couldn't have put it better myself, Timbo. I'm Ben O'Shea. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.